welcome back. In the previous videos, we've set up a character so we can run around and uh, essentially have the controller do banks right and left um, using the blend tree that's been configured as a 2D freeform Contagion blend tree. So what we want to do now is something similar to what we were doing earlier with it. It's actually have an attack feature for which we don't have configured here. And if you recall in the earlier lessons, we actually set the uh, attack up on its own layer. So we're going to do the same thing here now. So we're going to call this attack layer. Okay, so we want a default state, which is going to be again what we had earlier at the lower level, the base level. So we're, what we're going to do here is configure an empty state. So we're just going to call this here. And then from there, what we want to do is get a animation that's relevant for what we want to do. So, uh, which is going to be an attack animation. So let's just have a quick scroll through and see what we've got here. I'll go ahead and lock the editor here for the time being. We want some kind of a attack. Uppercut. There we go. So we're going to call that the uppercut. I'll go ahead and unlock that. We'll set a transition going in. Make transition. And this time we're going to use what's called a trigger to actually drive it. And the trigger name is going to be attack trigger, right? So when we have a uh, the attack trigger, it's not going to be in a zero to in a true fourth state like we were using in the earlier lessons. In this scenario, it's going to be um, essentially just a call to let us know that we want this to this action to be activated. So let's see if we can find that here now. So attack trigger, there you go. So there's no lesser than or more than, it's just, it's make this call. And then when we're finished, we want to transition back to that empty state. Uh, and again, there's nothing to set here because it's a trigger that's launching into the uppercut. Okay, so that's the first step. But now we need to actually be able to call into it. And for that, we're gonna to need to do, write a bit of scripts. So let's see if we can go ahead and activate that now. So again, um, we need a hash because we don't wanna be passing a string of call across. So private int attack trigger equal to zero. Trigger and Then the next thing we need to do is actually just grab that input value. So what we're going to say here is if input and we're going to use the left mouse button here. So get mouse button down. And if it's equal to zero, I, if the user actually clicked on it, set the trigger. Attack trigger. And technically that should do it. And just before I step away from the, the code, uh, earlier we were just passing a string through and uh, while offline, I went ahead and essentially started using hashes because it's a more efficient means of passing uh, parameters into the animator. At the same time, um, we're putting dampening values in. So while doing this set float, essentially it's an abrupt value set. 
So if I say five, it's just five. It's not a linear interpolation between current value and five, it's just five. But by putting in these weightings, um, we get the ability to uh, adjust the parameter values over time. So that's where, if, that, if, if you're following along and you're thinking, hey, that code didn't look the same, well, here's some comments. This works, but too abrupt. Better, but the call is not efficient. And, and then essentially when using the hash, it's an efficient call. And that's all we've done differently here. And so now let's see if we can uh, go back. Keep, keep things relevant. So again, we have two layers now. We have the base layer, and then we have the attack layer. Uh, by default, the attack layer will come in and it'll go to empty state, which essentially leave the base layer active. The base layer has locomotion. And, and then when we do have the parameter being a trigger being activated, then at that point in time, the, uh, let's go ahead and switch this off. Uh, the attack trigger is actually activated. In theory, we probably want to play the entire animation through, so I could leave the has, has exit time on to make sure that it does fully play through before completing. And then we have this other transition back here that comes through and says, okay, we've finished handling that specific trigger event. And uh, yeah, we should be good to go. So rather than talking uh, through further, let's see if we can run this and see what we get. So again, this, everything's still working. Notice the character slowly comes to, um, to speed up. And then if I click on the left button, the attack trigger is being clicked. Notice if I click the button, you can't see that the trigger is being clicked, but the animation itself is not actually playing. So let's uh, let's stop this here and, and just quickly go into that. So, boom, 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 boom. Let's have a look on the attack trigger itself. Yeah, so it does actually function. It's a humanoid and it's coming over to the avatar. So, all right, let's pause for a second and try and figure out why it is in the game, even though the trigger is activated and it does call into the uppercut, we don't actually see it. So uh, bear with us one second. Okay, we're back. Right, so after doing a bit of investigation with that bit of hiccup, uh, what we've been able to isolate the issue down was, um, I just totally forgot, in the, earlier lessons we had isolated on a different animation controller um, this avatar mask so if you recall the, what that does essentially says okay fine you want to be able to limit the animation that you're applying to work with a specific part of the animation rig so in this instance we know the attack layer we only want the the arm motion in terms of actually doing the attack and uh, for the base layer to work off the actual legs. So we don't want to, you know, we don't need an animation mask for the base layer, but we do need one for the upper layer. So that was one thing. Um, and we've actually just tweaked the script just a little bit to say, if the user is doing this action, i.e. attack, then fire that trigger, otherwise carry on monitoring what the user is actually doing. So essentially, you don't want to be uh, continue running if you're actually hitting at the same time. So uh, let's just uh, play this here now, we'll play it back quickly. So we come in, as soon as we click the, uh, the left mouse button, the character stops moving and does the punch action, right? And there you can see the uh, surprise uppercut being activated when we click the, the actual button. And it plays all the way through, so that's by default. So we made sure that we have an exit, exit time here. Um, we, we are responding to the animation trigger. And then uh, on the return, we don't have any condition. Essentially, you've just fired an event, handled the event, and then automatically return to your uh, existing state. So now we can run. 
we can bank right, bank left, and then go ahead, stop, automatically throw that uppercut. All right, uh, yeah, a bit of a hiccup there, but uh, these things happen, it's part of programming. But many thanks again for watching, and uh, we're gonna stop there and pick things up in the next lesson.